What's considered in some sense the main agenda for South Korea at the Nuclear Security Summit has wrapped up for an analysis of the all-important sideline meetings held by President Park Geun-hye in Washington. We turn to Professor Kim Min-mi, Dean of Graduate School of International Studies, Iwa Women's University, in the studio with us. Thank you so much for beating the hectic Friday traffic to be here with us today. Good to be here. Well, first of all, that's been a marathon of talks, very mm -hmm. important talks, mm -hmm. historic ones, if you might add three-way talks between South Korea, uh, Washington, and Tokyo. Okay. Uh, how effective do you think were the meetings in tightening the news further on North Korea? I think it showed a force of that these three major powers are going to be united on this issue, will wa walk together and work together to help uh, curb the nuclear initiative of North Korea. Uh, I think uh, for North Korea, it is a clear sign that these three countries will work together. Also individually they've added more sanctions so it is a clear show of force that you know things are changing and will will um, provide more pressure to North Korea. Thank you, Mr. Right, a clear sign of solidarity mm -hmm. uh, warning North mm -hmm. Korea that it's constantly painting itself to a smaller corner. Yes. Uh, will it serve as a, as a wake-up call for other countries to get more actively involved in your opinion? Uh, these are the traditionally the, the, the most important countries that have been involved. China is sort of, you know, treading its waters. Uh, so I hope this will be a wake-up call, but it's not clear because these three countries are the three that have been united in the past on this issue. So whether it will be uh, asking for other countries to, to join. If there was China on this, you know, three person, three heads of state, I think that would have sent a stronger message and urge more countries to, to come. So I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm hopeful, but I'm not really sure if this could really be signaling other countries to join on. Right, we're keeping our hopes up, but we're also ready to be disappointed with a very unique situation in China. Right, right. And of course, China is feeling a bit hot under the collar, especially for President right. Xi Jinping, because right. these are not very comfortable subjects for him right. to be dealing with. North Korea's nuke issues, that deployment in Seoul. Right. Uh, it seemed like China was the immovable object, but it is budging a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you foresee some more positive developments from China in terms of more active involvement in uh, change of attitude also in the three-way discussions on topics like uh, missile defense upgrades for Seoul mm -hmm. and uh, further uh, sanctions against Pyongyang? I think there has to be a move from China's part as we have recognized from uh, the, the strong economic relationship between China and North Korea. It's impossible if China doesn't get on board. And I think through bilateral and through these multilateral settings, China is getting the message. At least he didn't come out and say, I'm not going to be supportive. He was treading the waters carefully and didn't mention North Korea nuclear issues in his opening, uh, opening remarks. But on the other hand, he didn't say that he's not on board. He said, I'm on board in general. So I hope this is a good sign that he is, you know, slowly but uh, surely moving toward the goal. Hopefully more it, than just one foot in the door at right. the moment. But, but being here at the summit I think sends a clear signal that unlike uh, Russia, which did not come, at least the Chinese Premier was there and agreeing on this broad agenda of curbing nuclear, uh, uh, nuclear weapons around the world. So I think this is a sign that it is on board. China is on board but for this specific issue on North Korea. Uh, they are also very mindful of their close ties with North Korea. And maybe this is a good way because uh, at least North Korea will feel that I have someone or some country that will speak on my behalf or that may be a good strategy for uh, widening the diplomatic uh, uh, options. Right. China is uh, very carefully uh, uh, dealing with its uh, traditional younger brother. Right. Uh, seems like a wise approach. And of course, right. uh, as some wise people said, being there is all important. Very, very important. Unlike Russia. Unlike but moving Russia. on to another country that's, yes. uh, that's a very headliner for Korea, mm -hmm. uh, Japan. Uh, the landmark uh, agreement on wartime sexual slavery. Right. Japan just couldn't leave it alone. They kept right. uh, trying to work something around it. Uh, do you think the latest one-on-one uh, -on -one with President Park Geun-hye and uh, uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, this would be somewhat of a turning point in neutralizing such attempts by Japan. I think so. At least he said this in the broad open daylight in front of the whole world. So I think it's not something that he could easily backtrack and do all these little uh, mini shenanigans in the background. I hope this, because he reaffirmed his commitment to this issue that, and reaffirmed uh, the Japanese government 
to uh, uh, work out this very difficult issue with Korea and in front of the whole world, I think he's not, he, I hope this is going to be uh, the turning point. Right, it's a matter of honor from here Absolutely. on, and I'm sure he wouldn't want to shoot himself in the foot. Uh, so this is definitely some positive developments for South I, I Korea. I think so, I think so. Well, Professor Kim, thank you so much for making time for us today. Thank you very much.